Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of the Women series where we capture developments and stories that impact women. I'm sure you're wondering why we're in a different space. Don't worry, I'll let you in on the gist later. So for the month of May, we will be talking about women entrepreneurs who are putting Africa on the map. And that is exactly why we are here. Um, when you look around, you probably see arts, works and all the likes. And that's exactly brings me to <laughs> why we are here. We are in the Nike Arts Center in Lagos, and we will be speaking to Mama Nike of Nike Arts Center, who is constantly raising the bar when it comes to putting Africa on the map. Don't go anywhere. Let's go meet her. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the iconic Chief Dr. Mrs. Nike Davis Okundaye. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. I mean, it is such an honor to have you share a seat with me. I take that as a privilege. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to have you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. I am overwhelmed by this place. First of all, I must say that this is very, very beautiful. And the fact that it, it speaks volume, I mean, I every heart here identifies or tells a story of something that's, that is significant or is trying to relay a story. And I want to believe that you are culture bound and every art around you is a reflection of a situation or an event. As, I mean, even talking about your dressing from your gele to your beads and everything. As I could you want to share with us your fashion statements? Let's even talk about the gele. The first thing I know about you, if I see you anywhere, I'm looking out for your gele. <laughs> Just as when you went for this last event, I saw the gele, I'm like, my man never fails. She comes through with the gele every time all day. So could you share with us why we have this gele? Well, I want to let you know that the gele of a woman is their crown. So in those days, when a woman is going out, they wear the hair tie. Mm -hmm. And that hair tie represents the crown. When the man wear the crown, they wear their hat. So Nigeria is throwing away their hat because of the wig and also because of the um, real hair mm -hmm. that is coming from Italy, coming from. So why I try to go back to Gili is just because I want our children to know they are always the queen of their house. Once you wear your head, hair like this, hair of a woman is their crown too. When you wear your beautiful hair, your husband will even give you money. Go and do hair for me. Yeah. So it's your crown. So then when you don't do the hair, you wear your hair tie. And your hair tie is your, point, is your crown. Mm -hmm. So every woman is a queen of their house. And the hair and the hat is their crown. Right now that you <laughs> no, <video. laughs> no, this is lovely. It's part of your, you are wearing a crown. You know, oh, the, uh, in those days, uh, a woman will do shuku. Yeah. Shuku ologede. Bamole. Men follow me. Yeah. And men talk. So give oh, them okay. some uh, hair. Yeah, All is part of hair. Yeah. So it's like a crown. Hairstyle is a crown. And then when you now want to put on top of it, you put the gilly. Now let's talk business, you know, for a fashion yeah. statement. Let's talk business a little bit. Um, quite often than not, when you hear that people are into business, there are two things that are involved. It is either passion is their driving force or money is their driving force. For you, I mean, you've been in this business for over 50 years, five decades. How, what has been your driving force? Well, it's a passion. First of all, poverty make me go into the art. So I grew up with no help, no, no mother. My mother died when I was six. Uh -huh. So, but my great grandmother, the way they pass knowledge to education, to educate children in those days, they teach you what they do. So I will say it's an inborn. My parents, uh -huh. my parents, I'm like a fifth generation from my own direct background. So when I discover myself, mm -hmm. and then the American government now sent me to go and teach art to the African America in US. Not only me, we are 10 from Africa, and I'm the only female among oh. them. Yeah. I said, let me use this opportunity to bring something back 
that we also help people like me who have no education and the people who have education who has a passion so they can always do what makes them happy. So that is why you see me on the line of art. So that driving force is to make sure we can help our other colleagues, which are also like somebody like me who have no money to go to school. Yes. Uh -huh. But there are some people who go to school too, who still have love for art. So they can always do what makes them happy. So yours was the passion, was was passion, and the fact that you were born into it, and then poverty. afterwards poverty, poverty. <laughs> poverty. I mean, it's, yes. it's it is actually a reality, yes. and for for quite a number of people, it is their, that's just the reality yes. of life as of right now. A lot of people want to even go into certain things, but they don't even have like the common means to raise capital to start their business. But as uh, just as we said, passion eventually will drive you, and then money will come yes. thereafter. Um, let's talk about sustainability in the fashion industry. You are an icon in the fashion industry when it comes to Nigerian textile. If the accounting, I mean, they definitely have to reckon you and then pay homage to you. In terms of sustainability, how have you been able to sustain this business for the past 50 years? I mean, that is, that is, that's amazing. For the past 50 years, I've been able to sustain the business and keep the business running. So, you know, whatever you know how to do, you do it well. Then people will be talking, oh, like this hair tie now. I, I want to, I go back to the hair tie because this hair tie, the mayor of Napoli said they should bring that woman with the hair tie. So my yoga, Professor Walesho Yinka, call it Gele Gala. Yes. So he said, oh, it's my people. That is how they carry me to Napoli. So when I'm doing this textile, I always wear what I do. So when you promote yourself by wearing what you do, people will say, oh, this is lovely. Can you make me something like this? That is how I was able to sustain. So I will go to the corner. I will go and remove the dress. I will say, oh, this one, you can try it on if this fits you. So little by little, I was promoting myself by myself. You see, behind every successful woman is herself. I mean, I mean, you probably need to say that again. Behind, <laughs> behind, I mean, that's the truth. Because you hear everybody telling you that behind every successful woman is a man. I'm ah, like, no, it's herself. It's herself. So I always make sure I do whatever I do. I package myself in a nice way. And I always have a focus. And that is what gives me the money. Because when people see what I'm wearing, they will want to buy. Then I sell it to them, and I was able to go to different shops. I, I, I will wear what I'm wearing and what I make by myself, and I will go there. We say, you see, signature might try. By then, I cannot speak a word of English. Oh so they will say, what? I will say, do you have an interpreter here? Then they will say, yes. Then I, they, I will say, you see this one, Allah will run. Allah will run, no. <laughs> they will say, what is Allah will run? The one with the figure. It's more money, yeah. more than the ordinary one. <laughs> So little by little, I was able, it's young people like you people who actually taught me English. Because I will tell you, if I make mistake, you correct me, you, I only finished primary six, you, I don't hide my feelings. And then give them something to talk about. There are some people will call me Ugubugu, I don't care. Do what makes you happy and have a focus, the sky is your beginning. The sky is your beginning. Absolutely correct. I mean, I love the fact that you said the sky is your limits. Yes. Do what you love. Be be proud be of yourself. Your, be proud of your of yes. your product. Yes. Nobody can promote your product as no. much as you will. No. And I think that's one of the take home lessons we learned from our previous episodes where we talked about branding. Nobody can can promote your business as much as you would. It is your passion. That is <laughs> that's that's you. Um, uh, you are also into heart designs, uh, textile one part, heart one part. How have you been able to, how were you able to even merge the two together? Well, the art itself is like therapy. So art is life and life is art. Going to US, seeing a, a man painting, because I, I struggle in between the male artists so it was it difficult for you to find a very difficult around there because in it, was a, it was a male dominated they are all, and their teacher is a woman. Wow. But they never give her the credit. They always say, Uli Baya is my boss. Then Uli said, It's my wife, who is their boss? So it's a male dominating when I was growing up. 
and struggling in between the eyes. But going to America, we say, a woman do this. They will say, yes, a man do this. So in my class, I was teaching women. And the people in my class, they are all men. Then I said, no, this is a woman's work. They want me to teach women. They said, no, this is America. What a man do, a woman can do. Then I said, okay. <laughs> so when I get back, I call all my colleagues. I say, now we are going to learn men's room. And I will be the first one to go and learn it. Then I will teach it to you people. The idea that I'm doing that carry me to go, I will teach you. Then the women, women's loom. That's the loom. Yes, the That's women's loom. It's loom. only women that, uh, that do that one. Okay. Up till now, men does not want to do women's loom in Nigeria. They said it's a taboo. But women now are doing the men's loom. So that is what makes me say, let me share my knowledge. We are always our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. Let me share this knowledge so each one of us will be able to put food on the table. We don't need to depend on our men anymore because my first marriage, we are 15 wives. And these 15 wives, we have to wait until they say, this is for you. But after coming back, each one of us, before the man put one kobo down, we put three kobo down. Wow, so impressive. we are able to impressive. sustain Lend the yourself. family. Yes. And we have 63 children impressive. in the family. So. From the first marriage. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's a whole lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, your paintings, yeah. How often do you still paint? Oh, I every day. Every it's day. my life, yes. In the cafe there where I'm sitting down, I'm doing some pen and ink on smaller, smaller painting. Then I work two hours. Then I, I divide my time into three. Mm -hmm. One for my work, one for my family, and one for the gallery. So from 12 to 3, I work on my bead work. And that bead work, three hours every day, is one year before I will finish eight feet by four. Wow. So that is my painting with bead. That one is like my therapy. Mm -hmm. So I work with a spirit. You know, we work with our soul. Our soul is our spirit. Your, your you have soul. to put on your whole spirit, which exactly. is your soul, to work. So that one I do every day. If I travel, I will still add those days to it. So then I have to cook for my husband. Till now? Up till now, because he doesn't eat outside food. So I wake up 5 o'clock, because I always sleep early. I will sleep like 8 o'clock. Yeah. Then I have my sleep. Then I wake up 12, 12 to 3. I do my artwork. Then I have another two hours sleep. Then I wake up 5. I cook his breakfast. Then do the lunch that I will bring to the gallery. Mm -hmm. And then do the dinner that we eat. So that is from, then when people come, I get here by 10 o'clock. So I have three to four hours for the people who come to see the gallery. Then we have the girls who we attend to the people, but when people want to see me, I still have time for them. So you have your passion, what makes you happy, you focus on that and you follow. So all my work, artists die with brush in their hand. Mm. So artists doesn't retire. Yeah. So, oh joy, cool, oh joy, see me. <laughs> that reminds me of this song. <laughs> but I'm motivated by what you just said now, honestly speaking, because you just spoke about time management. There, every time, every every second is 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 valuable. You you divide your time and you follow through it through and through every single day. And you just said that even if you travel, yes. you you have to make up yes. time for any every of the losses you've had. That's impressive. Time management, even at this, at your age, that's not not impressive. I feel motivated already. Behind every success, you would agree with me that there is the pain, and there are losses as well. There has to be challenges. It, it couldn't have been rosy all through all through fifty years. That's a lot. Could you share with us some of your challenges or your your pain moments or moments you felt like, oh, I've lost some of this. I was in U.S. in 1982. We went to do an exhibition in Washington, D.C. And we went to a restaurant to go and eat dinner. Before we come, the whole gallery catch fire and burnt all our work. And I went with six, three of my cold wife and then three male artists. So all our things get burnt. So I went to the embassy. 
They say, I should stay in America. I don't need to go. So, so, so. I said, no. So I went to the embassy. I told them, this is the challenge. All our thing has get more. They even put it in the newspaper. And also in Nigeria here, they say, fire visit Nigeria notice in Washington, D.C. So you know what? I told them, I don't go to school. I'm going back home. Mm -hmm. Because there is no job I can do here that I will be. I can do bricky from home at home and make my money. So when I come back, I just take my run. They have already known me in Ushogo mm -hmm. that I'm using number three car, which is station wagon, Pujo. Mm -hmm. So, you want to drop your rack no, I, I went, the embassy borrowed us money, $200, to buy tickets to get back to Nigeria. I have paid when I get back. So I now come to the Art Council. I said, this is what happened. I would like to go and just do Libra job because I don't have education. So I carry my rag. I went to Sekona, Oshogbo and Sekona. They are like maybe five kilometers. No, so, oh, that's your community, okay, Sekona. Uh, Sekona okay. in Oshogbo. So I went there and I started doing Libra job. They pay you two shillings a day. That is 1982. So I make about 3,000. Then I use that 3,000 to buy tire to my station wagon that I park before I go. I now started doing Kabu Kabu. I will go to Ibadan and come back, and go to Ibadan and come back. Like and I will tell them, woman. I will say, this cow, I'm taking you as Kabu Kabu. If you take the car from me, there will be no food for me tomorrow. <laughs> Please don't take this car. They will say, no, we are not. Oh, yes. So that is how I manage, manage, manage. I was able to get enough money again. Then I went to buy fabric again, and I start my work. And that is, so there is always up and down. Yes. And you don't let that challenge pull you down. Yes. You have to go forward. Then I have no family whom I'm, my father have no kobo. He even want to marry me before I was 15. You run away. He, <laughs> <laughs> so you I said, away. okay, am I going to go back and say, after I have two children, and say, my father, come back. He have nothing. So I just have to face my challenge. And then that is how I get enough money. So I now went to the Art Council. Thanks to Agi Mopwede. I have a program already in 1983 mm -hmm. at the Los Angeles County Fair. They are going to pay me $3,000 for demonstration. So I will be working 19 days in the art fair. Mm -hmm. Then they will, people will be looking at me, how I'm working, and they are going to pay me $3,000. I told him the project. He now said, I will give you money for transport. And that is how I get yeah. back to U.S. That's and interesting. The fact that you even went on a break. <laughs> oh, you, you have done all kinds of jobs. Yeah. Many other jobs. Kabu, oh, I kabu, kabu. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that, that's I do Bliki Kong Kong. The second day I deliver my first baby. Wow. I have my first baby when I was 19. And there is no food, nothing. I trek to go and deliver the baby in the mission house. The mission people, I don't even have anything to give to them. Then I get home. They said they, there is nothing in the house. I said, okay. Because the little money I save, I save for Naira. So I said, when I have a baby, I will be using this to drink Ogi. And so my ex-husband borrowed the money. I went to Lagos to hawk. So he cannot make any money. He said, he's not coming home. Because this four Naira he borrowed, he has to pay this woman. So when they delivered to him, I said, your wife has delivered a baby. He, he refused to come home. I just, the second day, I just carry, I give the baby to the mother. I just carry my rag and do break it my phone for three or four days. After and giving birth. The strength of a is, woman. Uh, the strength of a woman. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel, I don't know how I feel right now, but I mean, it is, it is quite impressive to hear you tell some of these stories and serve as an encouragement to, to women out there that you can actually do anything you set your, your mind to do. You can actually do anything to see you set your heart to do. Let's round this up. We our time is fast spent. Um, how about policies you would want to see the Nigerian government implement when it comes to entrepreneurship? You'd agree with me that quite a number of people are going through a lot when it comes to entrepreneurship. Capital is a problem. Even when you now start up, like try, trying to um, to yes. strive ahead, move ahead, the first period is always very difficult. You know, capital, there is no profit. Those waiting moments, I mean, it can be very, very intensive. And then 
<laughs> what exactly is the government doing about this? What are the implementations, especially for women? Because we find out that quite a number of women are into the entrepreneurial skills. What are your thoughts on that? So what are we plead, plead to the government? is Because it's job alagba. What I will pray to them is to give the young starter a, a soft loan, a loan that they are not going to pay interest on. Small money. They can even give them ordinary 50000 and see what they will do with it. So when they have this little soft loan, then the woman, or the, especially the woman, mm -hmm. you don't buy what you don't need. You know, when, when you give some money to some people, they are house help. They have no food for their parents. Mm -hmm. Then they will go and buy food. No, you don't buy what you don't Set need. Your priorities right. No, you just you cut your cloth according to your size. Put the money into your business. I start my business with one shilling. Mm -hmm. One shilling. And today I grow my business. I wear crocs. I have money to buy Anything high heel. But I don't want to put my money on shoe because the crocs is better for me than the high heel that I will break my bone. So you don't buy what you don't need, but I will plead to the government if they can make a soft loan for new starter so they will be able to use the money to put something up. Because a lot of them, they can go to farm. They can start planting ordinary vegetables. They will make money. They can be doing orange juice. Eh? They will make money. So there is so much you can do, especially for food now. Yeah. Look at the people who start smoothie. Mm -hmm. They are making enough money. Yeah. So there is so much in Nigeria. Our, our country is rich in all this something you can do. If I can put all this crap together and make something out of it, you can do better because you, you people are the future of Nigeria. So they tell so. us all the time. <laughs> So they say, and we believe in that. Yes, we believe in that. Thank you very much. It was such an honor speaking with you. I had uh, an amazing time speaking with you. Um, I've learned about time management, learned about my passion to follow through and through. And then my sky, the sky is just my starting point. And this is all we have for you on today's episode of the Women's Series. Thank you for sticking by with us. And I'm sure you learned something from Mama Nike the iconic Mama Nike of Nike Art Gallery. If you've got any questions you want to ask, kindly reach out to me on iamide.ogutoye at proshiaengie.com. Kindly follow us on our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, thank you for watching.